Today's lesson will be over stem and leaf plots. So your learning target is that I can read and analyze stem and leaf plots. Let's talk about a little bit of vocabulary to get us started. A stem and leaf plot is a graph in which the data is organized from least to greatest, and then it's broken into a stem and a leaf. The stem is the highest place value or values, while the leaves are the lowest place values. Now you're going to have to do some work in your notebook. At the end of the presentation, you're going to have to show me your work for the next four slides. I'll then check your notebook and give you the assessment. So let's begin with the following table. So this information shows the number of home runs that Babe Ruth hit during his career from 1914 to 1935. And we're going to make a stem and leaf plot from this data. Now, as you can see, there are five steps. We're first going to put our data in order from smallest to largest. Then we'll decide our stems, followed by our leaves. We'll give our graph a title, and then we need a key, of course, to be able to read the um, stem and leaf plot. So I want you to go ahead and pause me. Take all of this data, all of this, and I want you to put it in order from smallest value to largest value. And when you're ready, I want you to come back and check with me. Okay, so one thing that I like to do when I have this amount of data is I want to make sure that I haven't forgotten any of my data points. So I had 22 points in my table, so I counted and made sure that I had 22 numbers all in order. All right, it's time for us to make our stem and leaf plot. So a stem and leaf plot sort of looks like an off-center t-chart. And if you look at my data, I have single digits and double digits. So the highest place value is my tens place. My single digits will have a tens place of zero and I go all the way up to the 60s. Now all I have to do is match up the leaf. So for example, right here, zero. Zero in the tens, zero in the ones. Two, zero in the tens, two in the ones. 3, 0 in the 10s, 3 in the 1s, 4, 0 in the 10s, 4 in the 1s, 6, 0 in the 10s, 6 in the 1s. Now I'm done with the 0 stem. I'm going to start the 10 stem. Number 11 has 1 in the 10, 1 in the 1, and that's the only 10s that I have. So now I'm going to go on to the 20s. 22 has 2 in the 10s, 2 in the 1s. 25 has 2 in the 10s, 5 in the 1s, and so forth. Would you go ahead and pause me and fill in the rest of your stem and leaf chart? All right, go ahead and check your stem and leaf plot compared to my stem and leaf plot. And then let's see what we've done so far. We've put our data in order. We've decided our stems and our leaves. Oh, we have to give our graph a title. I have to write it over here because I'm low on space. Babe Ruth home runs. And finally, we need a key. So a key just tells me how to read the stem and leaf plot. So I just pick one of my numbers, like 41, and I draw it like that, and that means that there are 41 home runs. Okay, here's some different data. This table shows the number of hours several businessmen and women spent aboard an airplane. And I want you to try to make your own stem and leaf plot. So you're going to follow the same five steps. You're going to put your data in order from smallest to biggest, decide on your stems, decide on your leaves, give your graph a title, and a key. When you are done, I want you to come back and check with me. Okay, again, I like to check. I had 21 pieces of data in my table, so I wanted to make sure that I had 21 um, pieces of data in my list from smallest to biggest. All right, I have single digits and double digits, so I'm going to go ahead and make my stem and leaf chart. And I think my stems this time need to be a one, 0, a 1, a 2, and a 3. All right, go ahead and check my stem and leaf plot. Again, I double checked that I had 21 leaves 
that would match the 21 pieces of data in my table. All right, so I have it in order. I've got my stems, I've got my leaves. I don't have a title. So I'm gonna call this hours on a plane. Ideally, that would be above my stem and leaf chart, but I'm a little um, squished on space right now. And then of course, I need to have um, a key as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put my key down here. It's gonna tell me how to read my stem and leaf chart. So I'm just gonna pick a data point like two, three, and that means that person was on the airplane for 23 hours. Okay, now that you've had some practice making a stem and leaf chart, let's look at one that's already been made. And we don't really have a title, but we do have, um, this nice little description up here. So we have the average lifespan of several animal species in this stem and leaf plot. And then notice this is how we're going to read it. So the stem is the tens place and the leaf is the ones place. So if I want to know how many pieces of data there are, I can just count my leaves. So it looks like there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Now notice that there is nothing in the three. That just means that there wasn't any species that lived into their 30s. But we don't want to skip a three. We want to be consistent in how we count. Now you know the range means this, the biggest number, 40, and the smallest number, 3. And we're going to go ahead and subtract those. So 40 minus 3 gives us a range of 37 years. The median. Now this one is going to be the center and I can really just focus on my leaves at this point. I can cross front, back, front, back, front, back and keep working my way until I get to the center. Almost there. Okay, this looks like it's the center and it stands for 15 years. The mode is what happens most often. Now if you look here, there are four leaves right here that belong to the stem of two. So my mode, the number that happened most often, that was 20. And finally the mean. I'm gonna have to add all of this up and divide in this case by 19 because there were 19 pieces of data. Why don't you do that and I'll do that and then we'll come back and check. All right, when you're adding, you need to be very careful. You need to realize that you cannot just use the leaves. You have to think about what that number represents. So you would start off adding three, four, six, eight, but then you'd add 10 and another 10 and a 12 until at the end you added 40. Now when I added all of those together, I ended up with 283 as my total. There were 19 pieces of data, that's a division sign. So I'm gonna divide by 19. I'm gonna get kind of a crazy number. It's gonna look like this. So when that's the case, make sure you look and see how, it, how um, I would like you to round that. All right, last example in your notebook. So here's another stem and leaf plot. This one is going to show the number of miles Megan biked each day during the month of July. So go ahead and get your answers and then you'll come back and check with me. So these are the answers that I got. I said there were 20 pieces of data. All I did was I added up, I counted how many leaves I had. And the range, I had this, the biggest number minus the smallest number, so 30 minus 5 is 25. The median, you'll see that I ended up with two numbers in the middle. When I crossed front, back, front, back, front, back, I ended up with two numbers in the middle. Since they're the same number, that happens to be my median. My mode is whichever one happened most often. And notice this stem of zero matching this leaf of 10 happened four times. So 10 is my mode. I added them all up. I added 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 6, and then I went 10, plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 until it finally I ended up with plus 30. 
and my total was 292. I divided by my 20 pieces of data, and it looks like she biked 14 and 6 tenths miles per day. All right, so now it's time to show me your work for the last four slides. Go ahead and bring me your notebook. We'll go through them, and then I will give you the worksheet. That's your assessment. That's going to be a class work grade today.